So, and share the PowerPoint. So let's let's focus on standard deviation uh, because it's uh, really one of the most top important. I mean, means uh, important statistics concept in, uh, in statistics. And the mean is usually easy to understand. The mean, the mean is just the average, but a lot of people think standard deviation is, is a bit difficult to, to, understand, to make sense. And, but basically standard deviation is a described uh, spread. It does, it does so with a single value. And that value, what, what it represents is, is this, is the average distance between the values, between the values of the data and their mean, x bar, okay? And it is often reported in statistic analysis in the results. It's often reported along the mean. So for example, you, 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 will, you will describe a sample as such that it has a mean age of 19.22, standard deviation of 3.45, okay? So by providing mean and standard deviation, you get you give people an idea an idea about the entire distribution of the data set of the sample. So so the concept again is the average distance, and what what does it mean? Right. So assuming here we have eight participants, and we are trying to depict their uh, their height. We measured the height of eight participants. And these are the XIs, right? So you can see that uh, it ranges from one about 140 to above 180. So now we have eight observations, and these observations are XI. And then I can be one to eight. I is the index, okay? And we can find the uh, arithmetic mean. And uh, here I draw a line where the mean is. Is probably around uh, close to 170. Now we can calculate the difference, the distance of each observation to the mean. Okay. And and the standard deviation is just uh, just average distance. It's not really averaging all the distance, but it does in a way that in effect calculate the average distance between. Uh, xi and x bar. So let's do an exercise uh, of calculated standard deviation of a sample. And uh, in the worksheet, you see some symbols and notations. And sigma is the summation. It, uh, it adds up everything, all the individual values included. Xi indicates the ith score in the vector, okay? and the i is the index. And sigma xi from i equals 1 to n means that adds up all the values of xi in the vector from 1 to n. Right? And it produces, it returns a single value. Okay? That's important. Once you've gone through the sigma, you have, and the, it returns a single value single value. So sigma is a function that return that adds up all the values and returns a sum. Okay. N is the number of values in the vector. X bar represents sample mean. Again, it's important to, important to differentiate between sample mean and population mean. And the SD is sample standard deviation. Okay. So those are the uh, the notations or symbols, math symbols, that are also present in the worksheet. So what I'd like to do is to follow the worksheet and to calculate first of the mean, x bar, the standard deviation, then the standard deviation of the data. Okay? Uh, because it's, uh, it involves Quite large numbers. I will also show you how to use Excel to do all the calculations automated in an automated way. 
using the Excel equations. Okay. So now let me share with you the my screen. I'll put the worksheet on, and I put the and I put the Excel file to the on, and so you can see. Close it. So let's work with smaller, a smaller data set to make it a bit easier. I'm going to put the Excel file to the right, make it a bit bigger. Put the worksheet on. Where's my worksheet? Open. Right. Okay, let me find my worksheet and open it. Okay, so put the worksheet in, right? Okay, so we'll be looking at the region data. So it has only has only nine observations. So in this case, n equals nine. Okay, now that's important actually. The second is that. Uh, we're going to do the uh, calculate the standard deviation for the cumulative lab confirmed cases. Okay, and by doing so, we're basically uh, we are trying to describe the the variation within this particular variable. And again, we talked in in, in the previous lecture about different levels of variation. Okay. And this is at the region level, right? Okay, so first step is to calculate the, uh, the sum. And actually, if you, if you selected all the cases, it, it already tells you the average, which is the mean, and the count and the sum at the bottom, right? But if you want to actually get the sum, you can use the, I'm just going to write sum here. You can use the, uh, and I select this, and I can enter a formula in the, as the value, right? So it says, like, uh, once you enter a formula, that's that's what uh, Excel is doing to find, is that once you've entered the formula, it can see that the argument that the formula can take. The formula itself is just a function. What a function does is that it takes some arguments and it returns a value. Okay, that's very important. So for any formula or any function in this case, in any program, the first thing that you should figure out when you use the function is to, to figure out what arguments it take, okay, and what value it returns. Again, it only does two things, take some arguments and return some values return a value, right? And in, in, in the sum case, you can take numbers as formula, uh, as arguments, right? And you can enter discrete numbers, but if you have used uh, Excel, you know that if you drag it, it will give you a series of uh, all the numbers in, the, in, in, this, in this column that in, in, in the selected area and indicated by E2, which is the starting cell, and E10, which is the finishing cell, and have a column in the middle that basically is saying from E2 to E10. So sum, and in this case, it takes a continuous, uh, an array of, of uh, values instead of discrete values as the argument, but that's the same, right? So that's the sum of cases. Now, and then you can just have another cell called average or mean and have this divided by nine, right? So this, you have to write down the same function, uh, write down the function equals E12, which is the value where the cell where, where the sum value is, and divided by N is nine. So now 
you have that. Okay, so now that's our B. Now it's a little bit large, right? So, uh, and it has uh, five digits after decimals, uh, after the decimal. I mean, you can change the uh, the format of the cell to, if you, if you want less decimals, you can select decimal places two, okay? So that's that. Now we have the mean, okay? And again, uh, the next step on the, so that's the first step of, of calculating the standard deviation. I mean, you can write it down here for your own record to, to just to, you know, to, I don't know, keep, I, I'm, you, you're probably not gonna do this again, like by hand. In fact, like in, in Excel, there is a uh, function that just returns you the standard deviation. But for the sake of understanding what it is, let's just do it by hand with the help of Excel, okay? Now, now we have the mean. Now we can start to calculate the standard deviation. Before I move on, I go back and check the chat. And uh, are there any questions at the moment? Any questions? No, no, no questions? Okay. Good. And by the way, uh, for those who are using Mac, uh, you, you might wonder well, how do I organize the windows? I use this uh, this thing called Magnet. It's a it's a little add-on or it's an app called Magnet. It basically uh, can automatically divide your window using uh, uh, how do I say the what's the shortcut key, uh, key shortcuts, and uh, I, it's, it's it's super helpful. It only costs like two pounds, but because Mac doesn't do it, Windows does this easier, and so they, they have this little app that helps you to, you can see on the screen that it help you divide the, the screen automatically. So highly recommended. Now, so we, now the next step will be to calculate the each different score of each, uh, different scores of each of these observations with the mean, right? So, well, what I would do here is I'm going to insert a variable called, just called a difference deviation score. So, and then, and then you basically enter for the, for the first cell a formula. Again, you write yourself, basically this E2 minus the mean score, right? E13. And then you drag it down. And then you automatically update it for each cell that follows. So E3, E15. Oh, okay. This doesn't work because it's updated in a way. So let, let's just enter the value. 15257.33, something like that. And then we do that. Okay. So now, so th these are the deviation scores. So there are, uh, there are eight of them, uh, there, there, there nine of them. Some are minus, some are, are below zero, some are above zero. Okay. And if you add them together, let's say like, let's say I want to, uh, if I want to calculate the average of, of these values, what do I get, right? So if you if you select all of them, you can notice that the average is zero because the sum is zero, because they are the difference between each value to the mean, and some are below the means, the other others are above the mean. So if you try to calculate the average of these, you get zero. Okay. So that's that's not very helpful. So the next step is to do power each value to the two, right? Do a square of each value so they're not zero anymore. So let's create another variable called deviation squared. And basically you will be using this function called power. Again, each function takes two, uh, this function takes two arguments, right? That's important. So number is the number that you want to power. 
and the power is two, right? So the number here, if you just select here and click this, so it's F22, two, two, and that's the, that's the square of the deviation between this value and the mean, okay? And if you just drag it down, it automatically updates. For each cell, it becomes, this one will do it on F3, G3 will do on G F4, okay? So those are deviations squared. You can see that, first of all, these number becomes larger. The second is that they all becomes positive after it's squared, right? So that's the point. So now that, that's step two, okay? So we have squared each deviation score, you get n values. And now you, you don't have, really have to write it down here because I realize those numbers are too long to write it down on these steps. But the next step is to sum, is to, to sum all the de, uh, squared deviation score, right? So to do that, you do another thing, okay, so Call the sum of scores, sum of values, sum of xi, mean. And you can call this one sum of deviations squared. So basically, you can write the same function equals sum. Click middle and drag. That's the method I use. So that's the sum of the deviations squared. That's step three, okay? Now, let me go back to the chat and see if anyone has any questions. No questions, everyone's still following? Okay. So the fourth step is to divide the, this value from sum of deviations squared value by n minus one. And this value is called the variance. Okay. And this is another very important topic in statistics. And you will hear uh, terms such as analysis of variance. What are they analyzing? And it is the variance. And that's the variance. Okay. So, and also I talked about variability and variation. And variance is basically a way of representing this variation. So this equals G12 divided by eight. Okay, so that's our variance. Right? And the final step is the square root this variance. Now we call that SD, standard deviation. So that equals, the function is called square root, SQRT. And then it takes a value, a number as argument. We'll put this one as argument, and we have the standard deviation of 60,835.34, right? So well, that's the standard deviation. So as you can see, uh, this is, and we, to verify that, uh, I can tell you there's a standard deviation from Excel, right, Excel, and you can use just Excel function as, I think it's SD, standard deviation, STDV, I think. Let's see if that's the case, no. What is the standard deviation? Standard deviation, STDEV, okay, STDEV, not those values, but uh, E2 to E10. Okay, so that's the Excel using the Excel formula STDEV, standard dev deviation. And you get the same number as the one that we have calculated, right? So that's standard deviation. Uh, this is how to get, okay, so how you asked how to get deviations to drop down. Okay, you got a bunch of questions. Uh, let's try to address this one by one. How do I get the get the deviations? 
the deviation is just each each observation minus the mean. So deviation for the first observation is 7,294 is E2, okay, minus the mean is 50,257.33, right? And if you just drag it down, it will update it. So, so this is E3 minus the same value, E4 minus the same value, E5 minus the same value up to E10. So those are our deviation. Squared is just basically to make sure that it's no longer a negative value, right? So now that's deviation squared. Squared is power to the two, right? So that's what squared is. And I'd be surprised that Excel doesn't have more easier ways to do the power and has to use this power function because you usually use uh, this little up cap to do the like this to do the to do the power up to right so but excel uses this function so notice that the de square deviation is still like they are for each observation there's there's uh, one of them so there are nine square deviation before it's all summed up right so the, the step three is where you sum up all the, the square deviations, right? So step three, you, you sum it up, turning eight, nine values into a single value, and then you div divide it by n minus one, you get the variance, and then you square root the variance because you square root it earlier, uh, because you power it to the two, like squared it earlier, you square root it at the end, giving you the standard deviation, okay? Now, what you can do as an exercise is that you could try to do this variance, try to produce the variance for a bigger data set, such as the upper tier uh, local authority. As I said earlier, the variation can be hierarchical so this is the highest level of the hierarchy, which is the region. But underneath the region, at the lower level, there's upper tier authorities, and there's even lower levels, the lower tier local authorities. The observations from these, uh, the, the variable is the same, is the cumulative lab confirmed cases. And these values we have at the regional level are just the sum of all the areas that belongs to that region, right? But these all have a different kind of a variance compared to the variance at the region level, at the regional level. Because by summing up, you are ignoring some of the variance that's going on at the lower level, okay? So we're not gonna do it now, but as an exercise, you can try to go through the same procedure using Excel again, make it easy. Or you can just using the formula just to just to get the standard deviation or the variance for the upper tier. Actually, why don't we just do it now using the formula because it's super easy, right? So now I'm at upper tier local authority. By the way, any geography students know what upper tier means? Because I, 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 because I did a lot. Like uh, yesterday, when I was looking for these data from National uh, Statistics Bureau, what, what, I think it's called National Statistics, right? Uh, let me check where is it. The terms of conditions. The data is from Office for National Statistics, and I learned these things about like, like U UK's. Uh, what do you call it, like different words. They have uh, different kind of a levels of authorities and it's just so complicated. And in, in lookup two, you can actually, it tells you a little bit about what they are. It's words, local authority, districts, counties, regions. So, so yeah. So I think some of the lower, lower tiers are words or local authority districts. And some of the upper tiers are local authority districts and counties. 
Very confusing. Yeah? So, but anyway, uh, upper tier. So we're just going to write a equation to get the standard deviation. A standard deviation of the, this variable here. So it just basically E S P dev from F one to F one fifty one using semicolon. So that's the standard deviation for the lower tier authority, uh, upper tier authority. You can see that the number is definitely smaller, right? But if you talk about the variance, the, the number here is smaller. It's 684 compared to 6,835, right? So, but what about the variance, right? Because you know that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Sum of deviations. So what about sum of deviations squared? Okay. So let's try to recreate variance, which is basically the standard deviation by two. Uh, a, a standard deviation powered to the two. Power this two. Well, that's the variance. And we can, again, we can reproduce the sum of deviations squared by having the variance, but time it by with n minus one. N minus one is 151 minus one, 149. That's the sum of deviation in at the upper tier level, local authority level. Okay. If we compare this value, you can square it, just copy and paste into the region. Let's paste special values. That's the Kind of raw deviation squared sum at the local uh, upper tier level. And this is the regional level. Okay. So basically, regional level has a higher level of variance, although they have lower level of, although they have far less observations. So this is sum of deviation squared. Again, this is from the measure of variation inside the upper tier uh, local authority. Like you can see this number is much smaller than the variation that exists at the regional level. So for standard deviation, the equation, some of you ask you why the divided by, uh, by eight is because it's for standard deviation, the formula is divided by n minus one. For cell G14 for the standard deviation and G15. Okay, let me show you the G14. G14 is just square root of G13. So the square root of G13. That's the that's the standard that's the formula for so standard deviation is the square root of variance. Okay. Variance is variance is the square root uh, is the is uh, divided is the uh, sum of deviation squared divided by n minus one. Okay. And sum of deviation squared is just sum of all the deviation squared.
It has less to do with, uh, some of you have asked why the uh, local upper authorities have uh, less variation. It, it, it has very little to do with, uh, with, it has more to do with the fact that the, the, the region is just uh, the, the sum of all the, of all the uh, upper tier authorities. So if you have more observation, if you have increased observation of, of units, then your 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 uh, your variation will will decrease. So because so the 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 sheer fact that it has much higher numbers of of of, of observations in the data that is 150 instead of nine. That's the most important factor that the variation is low. Right. You also like that that. The mean and the base numbers are also lower, right? So by default, you cannot have so much variation because you're seeing like from the range goes up to 4,500. And when you see at the regional level because of the aggregation and everything, and the, the range becomes much higher, right? And then remember, range is also a measure of, uh, of spread. So you if you have a, a larger range, smaller observations, you will have a larger uh, level of variance than where you have a smaller range at the same time, a higher number of observations, okay? And this is in the formula, right? Because it's divided by n minus one. So if n is larger, the standard deviation will become smaller and the variance will become smaller. Okay, so okay, so does some of you have questions or I see some hands up. So I'm not sure if you if you have questions you can just ask in the chat or Okay, so if there's no questions, we can just move on, okay? And uh, let me switch here to back to PowerPoint. That's that. So, and then again, this is just describing the average distance between scores in the data xi and their mean x bar. And you square, uh, you you will power them, uh, power the distance, sum them up, divided by n minus one, and again, what's shown on the screen is the formula for variance. You can see if n increases, if everything else is is equal, if n increases, then the very uh, the variance will become smaller, right? And then you just put a square root on top. You have standard deviation. Okay, so that's that. So the next step is to, as we talk about exploratory data analysis, and so far we've only dealt with a, uh, a single variable. But let's move on to, to exploring the relationship between two or more variables. And by two variables, we think of one as the independent variable that is causing the more sy systematic variation in the dependent variable. So the most important thing that uh, for to explore this relationship is that you have you want to determine the type of dependent uh, independent variable and the type of de de dependent variable and by time i mean whether it is a categorical variable or it is a quantitative variable so there are four cases right where the independent variable is categorical and the dependent variable is categorical we call it c to c so we're just going to use cc throughout this whole 
course to describe this kind of relationship. We have then have CQ where categorical variable is influencing, uh, is assumed to influence a quantitative variable. This happens in experiments because experiments have different groups and the group membership is a categorical variable. And the, and the dependent variable is usually a quantitative variable. So you have a categorical group membership influencing a quantitative measure. And you also have quantitative influencing categorical, which is which we are not going to to address in this in this uh, uh, to cover in this uh, in this course. And we have quantitative and quantitative. So let me use chat to see what kind of relationship is this and to do that let me just first stop the sharing and then i will share the share the powerpoint with you so i can see the chat at the same time uh, powerpoint create the powerpoint So, okay, so first of all, first relationship, how does the type of hot dog, different kind of hot dogs, influence the number of calories in the hot dog? What kind of IV DV relationship is this? Type your answer in the, in the chat, please. So is it CC or CQ? QC or QQ? Yep, so most of you will get it right that it is a categorical variable, which is the type of hot dog, and number of calories is a quantitative variable, right? So it's a CQ. Second is how does a driver's age how does a driver's age influence the sign legitimacy distance? Like as people get older, they're less likely to see, uh, they, they, they see closer and closer distance. So what kind of relationship is the second one? Is it CQ or QQ, QC or CC? So again, as many of you have guessed it, I've answered it correctly that driver's age is a quantitative variable. If it's numeric, numerically represented, and uh, a dependent variable is also measured as a quantitative variable, as distance. So it's a quantitative quantitative relationship. So the third one uh, is whether someone smoke or not, as categorized as yes or no, related to gender. What kind of relationship is this? Is it CC or QQ or CQ or QC? And as many of you have got it right, that it is a CC categorical categorical relationship. So it's gender is categorical variable. Smoking or not smoking is a categorical variable. And in this case, gender tend to be treated as an independent variable because it doesn't make sense to say that uh, whether smoke or not affects gender. Right? So there's some kind of a naturally occurring temporal order that allows us to, to make this kind of a claim. And so this is something to, to keep in mind, right? And this is not an experiment, but it, it's more plausible to claim causal relationship, causal effect from one direction compared to the other. Why is this analysis relevant? Uh, we are going to depict relationships between two variables, and it's important to figure out exactly what type of variables are they, 
because it would affect how the relationships are, are represented, as you will see. Okay? So the categorical categorical relationship, we are using either a two-way table or a grouped bar chart to, dis to depict their relationship. So for example, uh, we have a random sample of 1,200 US college students rated their body image as one of the three categories. And uh, we wanted to address the question of does the perceived body image differ uh, by gender? So AKA as men and, are men and women as likely to think their weight is about right or not? For example, that's one of the questions you can ask. Right? So you got this two-way table. Again, if you look at this two-way table, uh, what is in there? Right? Um, on the first and second row, you have on the top you have body image and the three categories, and on the that's the columns. And the rows are the gender, female, male, and there's a total row at the bottom, right? There's a total column to the right. Now the numbers that are included in there, what are they, right? Remember we have 1,200 students, so and it adds up to 1,200 at the right bottom corner of this table. But these are frequencies, okay? So there are 560 female students reported that their body image is about right. So these are counts, okay? 163 female students reported overweight, 33 reported underweight. A male have 295, 72, and 73. And again, these numbers are the distributions of responses within a, each group, right? And you have total. So total about 855 students, both male and female, right? 235, 110. And there are 760 female students and 440 male students, right? So, they, so notice that this, these frequencies can be summed according to row and according to column, okay, in the table. So again, we have two categorical variables and we use, say, gender is the independent variable because it makes sense. The two-way tables can be summed up in, again in one way or another by column or by row. Okay, so now our research question is now: Does perceived body self body image differ between men and women? Okay, so it has to be summed in one way or another. Okay, so as as you can see, in the next step, we're about to turn these counts into percentages. Okay? Because as you can see in the data, there's more female than male, right? So any kind of number that you see has to turn into percentages, conditional percentage, in order to make sense. But this can happen in two ways. One is you calculate a percentage uh, according to the totals of the column totals. Another way is to calculate the percentage, percentages according to row totals. Okay? So our question is to, in order to compare the male and female difference. So we want to sum it up on the rows and ignore the columns. Okay? So for female, we got to, if we sum it up to the to the row, according to row, which means each row is 100%. So female have 100% now, right? So now we lose the information about the total amount of female versus male, which is distracting us, okay? So we calculated this kind of conditional percentages by dividing the frequency by the total, okay? So we have 73.7% .7 of female about right, of all females. In the, in the sample, okay? So now this turns into a conditional percentage two-way table. Each row adds up to 100%. We're now ignoring the difference, the, the different in numbers of female and male students. But what we get is the relative, uh, is the distribution of the responses 
within each gender group and in a more comparable way. So now we can turn this into a conditional percentage table into some other graphs if you want, right? And we can draw conclusions to try to look at this, draw some preliminary conclusions without testing them, right? So now uh, there are different ways of, of explaining, of interpreting the, this, this graph. And you can say that the, the differences between male and female students uh, in terms of male are more likely to perceive, uh, to, to more relatively likely to perceive themselves as underweight than female, for example, right? Or you can say that males are less relatively likely than females to perceive themselves as about right. Okay? And of those differences, they're also more likely to perceive themselves as underweight. Okay? So, so that's, that's a categorical and categorical relationship. You, you produce a two-way table and turn that two-way table into a conditional two-way table, okay? And by doing so, we'll be giving up one of the columns. Uh, you either give up the column or you get, give it a row. And if you always put an independent variable on the rows, and then you, you don't have to worry about thinking which one to, to give up, you always just give up the column percent, uh, the column counts, and you do it on the rows, okay? So well, that's two-way table uh, that depicts categorical categorical relations relationship, and then we, let's talk about this categorical quantitative relations relationship uh, using what we call a grouped box plot. Right? Remember we did earlier a, a box plot depicting a single variable, but without grouping them. And if we further turn it into a grouped box plot, then we can compare the distribution of the same variable, but across different groups, right? So at about a group box plot, you have a categorical variable that's independent variable that's on, uh, that's, uh, on the x-axis and the y-axis is the quantitative variable as the dependent variable. And we'll make a, a group box plot in Excel very quickly because it's super easy, and then we'll go for a break. Okay. So I have to go back, stop sharing. Okay, let me share the whole screen with you. Okay, so now you see this whole screen. Uh, earlier we did a box plot on, I can't remember which one, is it the upper tier or lower tier? So let, let's go to the lower tier local authorities because there's more data there, there's about almost 300 observations. And you can see that uh, the region, the region is, uh, which region does this lower tier uh, local authority belong to, right? And by the way, uh, these are, uh, I use the xlookup function to, in order to, to get the data, get this regional entry from, uh, from lookup one, okay? So this is lookup one, and this is how lower tiers, uh, or local authority maps onto upper tier. And this is how lower tier local authority map onto regions, okay? And uh, what's, you will notice that the name of the local lower tier lo local authorities and the area code are the same, right? So uh, again, these are all data from Office of, for National Statistics. And so in order to get the region for each lower tier local authority, I use this function called xlookup. Basically, it looks up for the area code or the area name and returns in that lookup sheet and returns the region, which is the M, uh, column M from, the, from, the, uh, from that spreadsheet and to here. So that's automated again, it's all automated. And that's the same 
how I got the population. I, I looked up for this area name or area code from the population sheet and return the population and put it put it in the cell. Okay. And it also have density. Anyway, let's do a grouped box plot for this so we can go and take a break. So you do that by insert, if you remember correctly, box and whisker, right? So now you get a single plot, but what if we click right click to select data, okay? You right click on the chart and do select data. Now, you pop up this and ask you to select data source. Now we see that these are legendary legend entries and blah, blah, blah. But we see that on the horizontal category X labels, it's blank, right? But what, we, what if, if we just click that and then ask you to select data, and we're just gonna select, select from C2 and all the way down to the very bottom, okay? To 317, okay? And you notice some of them are uh, non-applicable because some of these lower tier local authorities are new and the data I have was from end of 2018 or beginning of 2019 and some of these local new, new local authorities are new. Uh, it was created on 2019. Okay, so if we have selected that, this row, like the region as the data source for the x-axis. And what we will get is this box chart, grouped box chart, box plots, okay? And we'll come back and take a look at this after the break. But before the break, is there any questions about how to get to this box plot, grouped box plot? No, no questions, or are you still trying? Uh, again, you can already see that this provides much more detailed information than just a single box plot, which is basically tell you, uh, this tells you the difference between different uh, different regions in the number of cases on lower tier local authorities, okay? So these are still lower tier local authority level data, but now the distribution is categorized according to the which region does each lower tier local authority belongs to, okay? So, from right clicking on the box plot. Okay, I'm just gonna repeat this again. Uh, I'm gonna stop the recording, but I'm gonna repeat the steps on the, stop recording. And now I'm going to 